no matter the location. From OAKLA to LV, I'm a Raider. You got a question? Ask me. How on our Raiders Live mailbags every single Tuesday, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. Pacific. So subscribe and join the show because all the questions that you're about to see come up here are from our loyal YouTube subscribers. Now, if you're wondering, hey, Mitch, how exactly can I subscribe and how exactly can I turn on my notifications? Subscribe is easy. Click the big red button. Notifications, that's a little bit different. So I want you to go to the settings app. It literally looks like the gear here on your screen. Scroll on down, tab YouTube. Tap notifications and then turn on allow notifications. It helps out the show a lot, so please go ahead and do it. All right, use hashtag Raiders or Super Chat to get your questions featured on our mailbag here. First one's coming in from Oscar DLT, more of a BLT fam. Should the Raiders sign William the Third, William Jackson the Third, okay, to help our rookies? If you're telling me right now I can get one cornerback in the free agent market, it's William Jackson. The issue is you're going to pay a lot for him. So I don't think it's ultimately going to happen. I think if the Raiders bring in any type of cornerback, the more and more I start to think it's still going to be Richard Sherman. Super Chat coming in from E. Manny. What up? Could we get Gilmore and Sherman? I don't really think that makes a lot of sense because the Raiders still want to use their young players. Like, they still want to get Damon Arnett, and they still want Trayvon Mullen to get work. If you bring in both of those guys, it just means less work for your rookies. So I really only see them bringing in one. Let me know who you'd rather them get. Gilmore or Sherman, go down in the comments. Let me know. Super Chat coming in from Marcus Smith. Let's say we keep Richie, cut Brown, and don't get a right tackle in the offseason. Who do you think should start at right tackle, good Parker or Young? I don't want Brandon Parker starting. I definitely don't want Sam Young starting. Denzel Good did a halfway decent job at right tackle when needed to be. But here's the thing, dude. I mean, they're not going to keep Richie incognito. He's uh, He missed 14 games last year, dealt with an Achilles, and they can save $5.65 million. So... Ultimately, there's going to be a need at right tackle, and uh, it's just it's not going to be with somebody that played on the Raiders last year. This one's coming in from Ramirio Cruz. I hope I got that right. It's this one's again on Instagram. I get that you guys can't always join the live show, so I've been saying, hey, I'm going to pick some questions that I find on Instagram, and I'll put them on the show. Mitch, is it possible to trade pick number 17 for Quinn and Williams and get Leonard Williams in free agency? Is it possible? Sure. Do I think it's likely, though? No, I would say the Raiders would have to pick probably one of those guys, Quinnen or Leonard Williams. But to your question here about pick number 17, I'll give my answer, but I first want to ask you all, should the Raiders trade pick number 17 for Quinnen Williams? I want you to type QW for yes, which means, yes, you're going to give up Quinnen or give up pick 17 to get Quinnen. Or if you're like, you know what, I like Quinnen Williams, he's a good player, but I would rather have pick number 17 for no. So QW for yes, type 17 for no. I am going to type my QW because if Quinton Williams was available in this year's draft, he'd go a lot earlier in 17. He's a young player, 26 years old, would fit absolutely what you need on the front. So, yes, if that was an option, I would 100% do it. All right, Super Chat coming in from OX3131. Trade Mariota and a second to the Jets for Williams, then go out and sign the Giants Williams. I mean, would I trade Mariota and a second to the Jets for Williams? Yes, in a heartbeat. I just don't think the Jets ultimately do that. Then go out and sign Leonard Williams. I mean, if this was a possibility, yes, you 100% do it. All right, we got another Super Chat coming in from LC Raiders. Should we sign Sherman? If so, what type of money would he be looking to get? So I've actually put this on a video about my offseason predictions. I had the Raiders going out, bringing in Richard Sherman. I'm thinking somewhere between 8 to $9 million. Um, I know on PFF, he's projected to get 14. You also got to remember that he's a co-host on PFF's podcast. He ain't getting fourteen million dollars a year. He's he's gonna get like eight to nine million a year. So I'm thinking two years, eighteen million. All right, Dave. Par wait, yeah, Pardo. Do you think McMillan makes the leap next year or not? The real question is, does McMillan come back? Because he's a free agent. So I actually don't anticipate the Raiders to bring him back, and I don't see why they would because he just really didn't prove that he deserved to be on the football field. He's a good run stopper. But he struggled on the run last year, and he's horrible against the pass. So I don't see that one happening. Let's go to Walter Clements. Damon Arnett needs to be more healthy, and he needs to play better. Couldn't agree with you more. Um, I also think he needs to stay off social media. But in terms of we'll just talk about on-the-field participation, I actually see a video that he just posted today, him working out. So Mike Mayock has said that he needs to put on some muscle. Multiple other People that I uh, that I listen to have said that Damon's a good player. He just needs to work harder, and I 100% agree with that. So 
We'll see. Hopefully he can take the leap because I think we would all agree it was a big-time reach taking him in round one last year. Esteban XX, trade Mariota in a fourth for one of the Washington defensive tackles if it's possible. I mean, if you're talking about Deron Payne, yes, I would take Deron Payne. Um, Jonathan Allen's also an option who was drafted, I believe, in 2017. I don't know if you can get Montez Sweat or uh, Kerrigan, but if you can get really like any of those guys for Mariota in a fourth, Bruce or Sam said Chase Young, hell, I, I would love to get Chase Young. That ain't never happening, though, but... I saw a report out there for Deron Payne that came out last week. He's probably the most realistic option at defensive tackle. Now, if you guys want more videos here, all you got to do is subscribe to all of our Chat Sports channels. Now, Chat Sports is an amazing, amazing like machine that we got going on here. We just crossed 234,000 subs there. But if you want more draft talk, Chat Sports has been the number one most watched NFL draft coverage the last three years on YouTube. Like last year, we had over a million people watch round one. Last year, we had about 10 million views over the entire course of the week. We get the picks before you see them on television, and all I'm trying to do is tell you this. If you love the NFL Draft, subscribe to Chat Sports. That's the channel that made the Raiders report. It's also the link that you see below, youtube.com slash TV. Question coming in now, Super Chat actually from Armando. What up, brother? Would you miss your child's burst if the Raiders were in the Super Bowl and it's tied in the fourth quarter? No. I would never miss my child's birth for everything. Like, I love the Raiders, bleed silver and black. I would love to see them in the Super Bowl, but I know the relationship that I have with my father, and I hope it's the relationship that I have with my kids. So if anybody else disagrees with me, that's fine. There's just no way I'm missing my child's birth. No way. Sorry. All right, this next one's coming in from Serfina Alvila. Sign T.Y. Hilton instead of Aguilar. No, I'd rather have Nelson Aguilar because you're probably going to pay him both the same. T.Y. Hilton, I'm sorry, he looked kind of washed up this past year and the past two years. He's under 780 yards the past two seasons, also battled some injuries, and I know what Nelson Aguilar can do with Derek Carr. I don't know what T.Y. Hilton could do. If you were to ask me where I think the most realistic spot is for Hilton, I'm going to guess it's actually probably Miami because he grew up in Florida, and he also went to Florida International. So, no, I'd, I'd take Nelson Aguilar for T.Y. Hilton. D. Guess. All right, J.D.R., Jack Del Rio had the 7th-ranked offense and the 20th-ranked defense with a playoff appearance. Gruden hasn't met that. You know, you're not 100% wrong. However, Jack Del Rio also, I thought, was put into a halfway decent situation as well. Like, I know that might be hard for some of you to wrap your mind around. But was I surprised that they moved on from Jack Del Rio? Yes. I mean, I think the biggest reason why they did is because John Gruden and Mark Davis, they were friends, and they thought they could get him over the hump. Here's the other thing, though. I mean, Gruden has improved, right? Like, I mean, his first year was bad, improved, and then improved again. If you can just continue to improve, I know 8-8 eight eight might not seem like that big of an improvement, but it is an improvement from 7-9. 7-9 is an improvement from 4-12. and 12. So I'm curious to see what the Raiders do, but the Raiders definitely need to start hitting on some of their trades, and they need to start hitting on free agency. But I get the whole Jack Del Rio thing. All right, Mad Bet Woodworking. Do we trade back in the first round and get a late first? And second round pick in this year's draft. Fourth or fifth round pick next year. Get Tommy. Okay. Um, in terms of a tight end, I'm not going to focus on tight end because it's not a need for the Raiders. You have Darren Waller. You have Foster Moreau. Not one of the bigger needs. If the Raiders can trade back in the first round, yes, I would do it in an absolute heartbeat. Not because there's not players I don't like at 17, but there's a lot of players that I like at the end of the second round and beginning of, or end of the first round, beginning of the second round. So if you can get more players to build that defense, I am all on board for that. This one's coming in from Pete uh, B.U. Unger. <laughs> Will the Raiders draft Micah Parsons? So I saw a mock draft that had the Raiders taking Parsons, and I've actually been getting a lot of questions around this. Here's the thing. Do I think Micah could actually be a fit for what Gus Bradley wants to do in terms of being like a Melvin Ingram style of edge rusher? Yes, I do. If you're going to use Parsons as like a middle linebacker, I don't really think that's the way you should use him. If you want to use him as more of an edge rusher, sure. Now, you guys know that I'm from Pennsylvania. I watch a lot of Penn State football. This guy didn't play in 2020. In earlier mock drafts, in earlier draft season, this guy was getting mocked in like top 10, heck, top 5 in some places. And then there's been reports out there that close to 15 teams won't even put him on the board because of some off-the-field issues. There's a lot of off-the-field issues, and I'm worried about Parsons. But if you want the talent, it's there. However, I don't really think it's ultimately the way that I personally would go. But let me know in the comments, should LV draft Micah Parsons? He's a talented player, no doubt about it. But 
when you see the reports, when you see the off-field the field stuff, that's the kind of immaturity and issues that I don't really know if the Raiders and a guy like John Gruden is ultimately going to look at. But he is talented. So let me know. Why for yes or and for no. Super chat coming in from too many tats. I don't got any. Brian Edwards will develop into our number one this year. I mean, we'll see. I mean, he's definitely got the size. I mean, you saw John Gruden talk very highly about Edwards and said, hey, we thought this guy was a round one talent, just suffered a lot of injuries at South Carolina. And you could see the talent was there. He just, once he got hurt, they didn't really put him on the football field. Now, I thought that he deserved a little bit more work at the end of the season when he was on the football field, but it's still going to be Ruggs. It's still going to be Edwards. I mean, those are going to be your probably your top two wide receivers. Sure, you also have Hunter Renfro. I'm curious to see what they do with Nelson Aguilar, but I'm hoping that Brian Edwards takes that leap. And if you were to ask me which rookie, I guess they're not rookies anymore, which receiver Brian Edwards or Henry Ruggs turn into the number one option for the Raiders next year, I would put more money on Brian Edwards than I would Henry Ruggs. Let's go to Troy Gonzalez. Do you think if we get an alpha on defense, we can overtake the division? As much as I would love to say that, no. I, I just can't wrap my mind around the Raiders being better than the Kansas City Chiefs for 17 games. Were the Raiders better than the Chiefs for two games this year? Yes, they were. But the Chiefs also show up 95% of the time, 99% of the time, realistically, with Mahomes. The Raiders, for them to say that we're going to overtake them, you need to beat teams like Atlanta in Atlanta, not lose 43-6. to You need to be able to take care of teams like the New York Jets. You can't fold when you're 6-3 and three and just an absolute collapse down the stretch. The Chiefs don't do that. The Raiders are better than the Chiefs were this past year in two games, the two games the Raiders played. But it's a lot more than that. It's a longer season, so I'm still going to say no. Super Chat coming in from the Autumn Wind. If we don't bring back Booker, do we try and sign Ingram to a vet minimum or Samuel to two years? So, Devontae Booker is an interesting option. I think the Raiders cut Jalen Richard. You save $3.5 million. I am curious to see what they do with Devontae Booker. If you were to ask me, hey, pay Devontae Booker $2 million a year or pay Mark Ingram $3 million a year, I'd rather pay Mark Ingram. And then and the issue is vet minimums 1.05. That's just not going to happen. And then Samuel, two years. And if you're talking about Curtis Samuel, two-year deal, maybe like $16 million. Sure, I'd be on board for that. I just don't think that's the kind of deal that he goes out and does. Now, if you guys want to talk more Raiders with me, hey, hit me up on Instagram, MitchellRent365. If I missed your question on today's show, I'm sorry. I know we get a lot of questions. we got over 800 people watching now. DM me. I'll go through all my DMs uh, tonight and tomorrow morning at MitchellRent365. All right, Aron, uh, if we don't re-sign Aglor, should the Raiders consider signing Corey Davis? Uh, I'll say sure, why not? But again, if you're going to spend $9 million, I'd rather you just spend it on Nelson Aguilar. This next one's coming in from Marley. If we had an open on Devonta Smith, do we draft him? Devonta Smith is not falling to number 17. And even if he did, I'd be more inclined that the Raiders should trade back because somebody else would want Devonta Smith than taking him. Like, is he a great player? Yes, but it's not a major need. And again, if you can put as much talent as you want around Derek Carr, but if you're giving up 35 points a game, it doesn't really matter. So Devonta Smith's not falling to 17 anyway. But Marley, I do appreciate your question ultimately. So if you guys uh, want to get your questions in, use hashtag Raiders or Super Chat. We got this one coming in from Jack Off. Mariota in a first and a second for Gilmore. That's probably too much. So I'm not going to give up that many for Gilmore. Do I want Stephon Gilmore? Yes. But I also don't think that that's... New England also, I think, wants to kind of give him up as well. Uh, the issue is they also would have to eat like $8 million. But no, that's not a trade that I would do. Let's go to Manny Villegas. How, yeah. How would you feel about signing Marcus Williams and a William Jackson and draft Christian Barmore? I mean, that all obviously means that you miss out on all the top DT. So basically what you're saying is spend big on Marcus Williams. Spend big on the top cornerback, William Jackson, and then get Barmore. I mean, I'd be open to it. I mean, you're probably going to pay Jackson $12 million a year. Probably going to pay Marcus Williams probably $13 million a year, so that's $25 million. I, My biggest thing is, though, like, then you could also probably get some other pieces here and there as well. But Barmore, Williams, and Jackson, yeah, I'd be on board for that. All right, Vincent, how much for Kenny Clark? Kenny Clark's another interesting piece here that I know that's been brought up around the Raiders. I don't know. I mean, I, I personally don't really know how much he's really going to go for. I, he's not really been a player that I've heard a lot of reports about. He's also not really been a player that I've put a lot of focus on because I don't really think he's going to be a player that the Raiders get. All right, let's go to Keith. 
Trade Carr for a first and second. Thoughts? The only way I am trading Derek Carr is if I know I can upgrade. If you're telling me you take that first and a second and can invest it in Deshaun Watson, that's what I do. Because he's the only realistic quarterback that's better than Derek Carr out on the market. Sorry, Russell Wilson's not an option. All right, Daniel, how much money can we send on a big player? So basically, how much can we spend? So if you cut a whole bunch of players in the offseason, I project the Raiders to be somewhere around like $41.77 million after they cut all their players. So if you want to go check out my video about some potential cap cuts, that's on the video or on the channel. And I've also put out a video about my offseason predictions. So Daniel, please go check it out.